the first one was a little more like um, throw something up against the wall and see if it would stick, yeah. and it did stick. And I think we made a lot of mistakes that first one that we didn't ma- make the second one. And uh, the second one, the mistakes were far less. There was still some, but it showed me the team that we have, what we are capable of. And I think that's why, you know, we weren't supposed to record today. I texted you this morning. I asked you if you wanted to record because, I, like, we did two days this time, which, in essence, the first time we did one. And it this one felt a little less, uh, like, uh, there was less climax. It was like we were doing what we knew we were supposed to do. Like, day two, when we went into service, we were extra prepared. We were extra focused and it was almost extra easy and we did there was a lot of things on this tasting menu that aren't normal in miami and a lot of things that i was told that no one but certain people in the country could do and that's why we did them yeah. and it was nerve-wracking and i lost sleep and we went through it a million times we walked through it a million times uh we actually changed monday's tasting to wednesday because of the threat of a hurricane but actually, I think more so because I felt more comfortable with one more day of practice, sure. which is fine. So, in a way, some of this is a little bit of a flex, or at least um, at least aspects of it are. No, I don't think so. No, no, I don't. I don't a flex is a it's a strong word. I think it's um. Can you do it? Okay. You know, like, can you achieve this thing in this time? During these like very weird, fucked up times, like, can you do it? Will people come? How will they be? So do you feel like you're trying to prove more to yourselves, plural, right? A hundred percent. I think that the team, there's days that this team, you know, like we have uh, Assam, obviously, that's been on the show in dropping off wine, yeah. Todd. Deceptively badass. Deceptively, yeah. Deceptively hard, man. Yeah, that he's, um, you know cable of so much but there's days that he's bussing tables and helping wash dishes and you know Brittany, that is the director of operations there's days that she takes a section and she works you know as a server and um so everyone is kind of like out of their zone but what this does is it puts them back in their zone yep. you are a psalm for the night you are the director of the thing tonight you are this tonight you are doing what you are supposed to be doing it's almost like a reminder of like, this is what life is supposed to be like. Right. And we know that things are weird and life is weird, but we know that this is what you're capable of and we want you to live in that zone, even if it's just for two days. Um, and I think that's really what it's about. And I think, so like yesterday, I went through the whole thing and like like usual, we, uh, I'll, the team will come out and We'll have a couple drinks and we'll just talk and like, oh, you remember when this happened and this guest did this or whatever. It's just kind of like a bonding thing and it's fun and, you know, pretty uh, innocent. But I didn't feel like uh, like a climax moment. I felt like this is where we were supposed to be. Yeah. This is how I feel how good we are every day or how good we could be every day. And... Um, until this morning, I was getting coffee this morning, and uh, I was getting coffee this morning, and I was thinking about the whole thing, and I sat in my car, and I go, man, like, we, I feel like we really did do something very special. We stepped outside of our comfort zone. We pushed ourselves to a place that um, we hadn't been before. We felt uncomfortable. We felt nervous. The energy within the staff was high octane. The, you know, the food was precise. It was well executed. It was a lot of things. And it was, I think the first one was great. And this one, just because of how we reacted and how we acted in the moment, was even better because not only did we rise to the occasion, we in that occasion felt like this is where we belong and this is where we need to live, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So 
you know, like just sitting there thinking about it today, I was like, you know, I, I think that the climax for me was more today when I reflected on it a little bit. And, you know, today I was like more mentally exhausted than I was physically. I remember like a moment yesterday that uh, I fired like four tortellini and brodos and two ducks and four rabbits. And then I fired two picnic dishes. So I look behind me and I see like Chef Sherry, which is one of our new sous chefs, is like dropping liquid nitrogen into an igloo and dropping avocado rocks and preparing the mackerel tartare for the cart to pick it up. And it was just like a thing. And and I see we actually extended our kitchen into the dining room. Since you can't use the dining room, we made the entire dining room our kitchen. We set up a okay. pass in the middle. Yep. I set up a cold side. So we set up coolers and um, actually set up a chest freezer and all that stuff. And it was like I made the kitchen four times the size. And – so I was working like circular and um, at the same time, like firing the eel terrine and the eel terrine was smoked. And then we had like five smoke guns, like smoking with uh, uh, bay rum wood from Homestead. And it was like a, a lot of things happening. Yeah. And it's a lot of things that are outside of the comfort zone of Ariette. And that says a lot because Ariette is not scared to push the envelope. But we only push the envelope as much as the kitchen allows us to. And the kitchen is very small. So this time we like pushed it even further and further. And I, you know, I sat in my car for like 20 minutes. I drank my coffee and I was just like, I felt like, man, this is, um, it was something special. And I think going back to what I said before, the staff felt and acted like they, that's where they should have been. This is where we should be. Not like um, this is our first time and we're nervous to be at the dance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Was there a dish or a set of dishes that you feel like were the ones that have most of your fingerprints on them? No. Okay. I, I'm i like um, in this very unique position that I have seven or eight employees in the kitchen that are absolutely incredible at what they do. You know, they're young, they're hungry, they're hardworking, they're talented. Um, I think 100% this was like a great collaboration effort between everyone. And, you know, I don't take credit for anything solely. I think it was a group effort. I think that the composition of the entire dinner was something that maybe not everyone could understand. So maybe they understood it better afterwards. Yeah. Because... And by the way, that's not me like asking you to take because I I know from number one just from how you guys work in general, but also I mean, especially because the menu changed from one month to the other. I mean, in a couple of months, it's it's a couple dozen courses almost. Right. So there has to have been. If I ask you that question, it's a question that I would ask other people. I'm sure. Right. You know, but um, no, but see, so like, this is why I find this group of of individuals so special. Like, we would meet um, once or twice a week. Someone would make breakfast, we would meet in my office, would have coffee, we would talk for like an hour and a half, two hours, like, well, this dish, like, which way do we want to take this, yeah. and who wants to prep this, and how do we want to approach this, and when do we want to test this? Right. And we- It was like, um, there was people in the room. So in a way, I mean, and again, I'm not saying this to, like, to give you an opening to brag or anything, but I'm trying to take this to a place where it's like your unique perspective on this thing, I, I, and tell me if I'm wrong about this. I imagine if that's the case, it must have been validating on the level of like, this was the ultimate test of whether you'd pick the right people, of whether you'd surrounded yourself with a team that was capable of doing that. A hundred percent. And you know, like, I, and not everyone in the team is fully formed. Right. Like, I think that they still have a lot of growth to do, just like myself. We all have a lot of growth to do, but I think we grow together. What are you good at? What am I good at? How can I help you? How can you help me? What can we do together? What is it that, you know, like, is there something you really want to do? Is there something that you really want to see? You know, like, yeah, in essence, I sit there and I come up with like, hey, we should do this dish and this dish and this dish. But uh, they'll be like, what about this, that and the next? Or maybe we could do this or maybe we could do that. I don't know. It's it's a special moment to be in. And it sucks because we're living in a moment that the world is a fucking train wreck. But it's a little bit of a, a respite. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like a nice feeling to like be able to sit at 
at a table with people and not think about like how fragile the world is. I'll leave it at this. I um I feel like blessed and fortunate of the fact that today and just very vaguely we released dates for the one in September and they sold out in 24 hours. Two days. Yeah. 70 tickets. Um the amount of support and love we get from the community is crazy and I can't thank people enough and I know like that makes me work harder and lose more sleep and just try as much as I can to make sure that they have a special special night uh, but I'm I'm excited for September and it's gonna be hard to one up what we did last time but I think uh, we're gonna do our best to do that 